Good morning, Grace Gospel Church. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, so cool to see so many shoe boxes coming in. This morning, you can go ahead and uh, find a seat as we get started. And uh, actually, I'm going to invite you to stand in reverence of reading a passage from God's Word this morning, uh, coming from the 100th Psalm. It says this, Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise, and give thanks and praise His name. For the Lord is good, and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. God is so good. That's what that passage says. He is so good, and He is, he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy uh, to sing to even in this place this morning as we enter into a time of worship together. And so I'm going to invite you to do just that. Enter into worship with us this morning. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful and grateful to be here this morning. Uh, Lord, we gather together today to worship you because you are good, because your love endures forever. God, you alone are worthy to be praised. You alone are worthy to be worshiped. You alone are worthy of our adoration in this place this morning. We give it all to you. God, we just, we just give this day to you, give this time to you. May you alone be exalted and may others be pointed to you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Good morning. Let's sing together. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Sun comes up, it's a day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the
As we worship God together, it's not perfect, right? But it doesn't matter because God hears our hearts. And um, as we sing this next song, just think about how God loves you so much. He loves all of us more than we can even imagine or fathom. And sometimes I think it's easy to compare it to human love, but it's something far beyond that. Worship your God. jealous for me. He loves like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. Oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us.
God, we just thank you for who you are and the love that you have for us, even though we don't deserve any of it. God, the love that you have that you sent your son to die for us so that we have a chance to live with you in eternity. We just worship you, God, because you <clears throat> deserve all of our worship. You deserve all of the praise. You deserve all of the honor and the glory, Lord God. And we just thank you for the opportunity to worship you together. Standing on this mountain top, looking just how far we've come, knowing that for every step you were with us, kneeling on this battleground, seeing just how much you've done, knowing every victory, your power in us. Scars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say, yes, our hearts. faithful to us. Amen. And, you know, at the end of the day, he's God, right? And there's so many words to describe him. And I'm sure you can come up with a list in your head. But one thing remains the fact that he is unchangeable, right? 
He is constant. What he says, he will do. And that is something in this world where everything around us is constantly changing. We can hold tight to the fact that God never changes because he's God and he's God alone. You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. That's just the way it is. God, we are so thankful that you are the unchangeable, unshakable God. You are the chief cornerstone. God, we are so grateful for who you are in this place this morning, today, and every day. Lord, you are so good. You are so good, and it is the unchangeable, unshakable God that we get to serve in this place. Lord, we love you for that. 
God, may we just rest in your goodness and your grace and your mercy for who you are. The same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Lord, we love you. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning again, Grace Gospel Church. So good to see you this morning. If you are a visitor in the house, welcome to you. We do have uh, welcome cards in every seat pocket in front of you. And so we just invite you to fill that out. And uh, that's just so we can get to know a little bit more about you. You can get to know a little bit more about who we are here at Grace Gospel Church. And even if you've been at Grace and you just have some information to update for us, uh, you can do that. Update your email, phone, address, whatever that may be, uh, just so we can update our records. And again, that's just, you know, again, you can be in the know of all things that are going on here at Grace Gospel Church. And uh, we send a weekly newsletter out every Wednesday uh, with events and everything happening here at Grace. So that's a really, really good way, a good tool for you to be able to plug in on things going on here. Uh, while we are up here, we do have two ministries that happen downstairs, uh, both Kingdom Kids and Super Church. Kingdom Kids is for those from newborn to preschool and Super Church for kindergarten through sixth grade. And so kids, you are now dismissed for either of those ministries. They're staying up here. Never mind. Staying up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For the shoe. I know now, yeah. All right, you're staying. <laughs> All right. But uh, parents, though, we do ask that while, when you go, do go down, if you have never uh, sent your child downstairs for either of those ministries, uh, you just go down with them this first time, fill out some paperwork, and meet our leaders downstairs. All right, we do have a lot of announcements this morning. First, uh, tonight is our Thanksgiving uh, praise and soup potluck. You do not want to miss it uh, happening downstairs tonight at 5.30. Uh, you can still sign up in the back for that. We're asking everyone to bring either a soup, a bread, or a dessert to share. Uh, it's just going to be a really, really good time. One of, the, one of the great events that we do here at Grace every single year, so we invite you out to that tonight. Our ladies' Christmas brunch is coming up. So Saturday, December 4th, another great event that we do here from 10 a.m. to 12.30 right here at Grace. And there's some instruction for that today. So uh, tickets are just $10 a person. Uh, there is a limit to $5 per purchase. So if you're purchasing for a group of people, friends, neighbors, family, coworkers, whoever it may be, uh, we do ask that you make sure that they are coming before you purchase those tickets. So be uh, sure that they're coming and uh, you can buy up to five of those. If you're interested in purchasing tickets Today, uh, you can see Carol Cachetto in the back, and she will be back there ready uh, to get you your tickets. Uh, we still do need table hosts for this event as well, and so you can see Miss Danielle McCarty in the back if you are interested in hosting a table for our ladies' Christmas brunch. All right, and then uh, this past Thursday evening, we had an evangelism training uh, just a one-time, one-week thing, and it was awesome, all right? It was great if you were not there. There are outlines in the back, kind of a, just what we went through, just giving a clear presentation of the gospel is what we went through uh, during that training. And so in the table in the foyer, actually, there's outlines for that. You can take those. Uh, there's two different forms, and uh, again, you can just take those and see what we went over for our evangelism training. Again, it was a great night here on Thursday night. Uh, we do have another announcement to be made by Miss Danielle McCarty. Uh, for the progressive dinner coming up. Good morning, Grace Gospel Church. So this is one of my favorite days, shoebox dedication, but that's not what I'm here to talk to you about. Uh, <laughs> one of my other favorite things that we do that coming up this time of year at Grace Gospel is our annual progressive dinner, um, which is our Christmas celebration. Um, it's an adult-only event. It's happening on December 11th at 5.30. Um, if you've never been to a progressive dinner, what we do is we begin with hors d'oeuvres at one house, which would be my house. Um, then we split up into different host homes for, uh, for dinner. Every, every host home has lasagna for dinner. Um, and then we go to a dessert home, which this year is going to be at Frank and Diane Rudolusso's house in Center Reach, um, for dessert and a white elephant gift exchange. And it is a fun time of fellowship. You get to um, just visit and, um, and have a lot of fun. Uh, a white elephant gift exchange, if you've never been a part of that, is that you find something in your home 
that you're going to gift. Um, could be funny, could be nice, could be, but um, you wrap it up. You don't mark it. You just wrap it up, and you bring it that night, and um, you get to see personalities come out in people um, as, you, uh, as you open gifts and exchange gifts and, and, and that kind of a thing. So it is a super fun time. Um, if you would like to join us, it starts at 530. Um, there's a sign-up sign sheet in the back. You can sign up to bring an appetizer to my home. You can sign up to be a host home, which would mean that you would make lasagna and host uh, up to eight people, including yourselves, uh, in your house. Um, you can sign up to bring salad and bread to the host home, or you can sign up to bring dessert. Uh, so that sign-up sheet is in the back. If you have any questions, please come see me. It is a really fun time. I encourage you all to just join us for that. All right, good morning, Grace. You good? You guys good? You sure? It's been a crazy week. We've had a lot of great stuff. We've been collecting shoeboxes all week. So I was here yesterday um, just doing some stuff for Sunday morning, and, and they were just about to leave, you know, within 20 minutes, and 500 more shoeboxes came in yesterday. So, we, so now we have to pay overtime. You know, it's crazy. But um, <laughs> it was great. It was great. So... Uh, just two more things. So this past Sunday, we had a great celebration at the Selden Fire Department. It was just a wonderful time to see, uh, you know, just a very many of you as we got to celebrate and uh, we got to see what God is doing, especially with the property. So if you don't know, we purchased the property next door. Um, well, we mortgaged the property next door. We don't own it yet, but we own it. You know, you, you know that, right? You're like your house. <laughs> so um, just a good time. Just a great time. And so we're excited about that, and, and we were excited about what happened. And uh, as a matter of fact, I wanted to show you. So if we could turn off the lights up top, and then um, I wanted to show you why some other people are excited about the property next door, too. So. I'm excited about the property next door for a lot of reasons. Tell us uh, why. Well, I just think it's so exciting, and I think the God is just cool. I mean, he's just really neat about how he does things, and he, it, it's, it's a learning experience for all of us that we never underestimate the Lord in, in our walk, in our faith, you know, and I just think it's the greatest uh, thing how he just worked that out right next door, and we have plans for that place. And I'm excited to be a part of the growth to see what God's plan is uh, in the next years to come. So the youth ministry is a big part of my heart. Um, I love youth and I love working with them. And it's so exciting to me to see how it's built. Over the past few years, things have just taken a dramatic turn and it's been amazing to see. And I am so blessed and humbled to have a little part in that and to see it firsthand and to see how our kids have grown so much and how many new kids have been coming. Another turn in that, how many of our kids that hadn't been coming to church on Sundays now are coming on Sunday mornings? It's so exciting for us to see and to just see how God's continuing to grow that ministry. The growth of the church body itself, I mean, just giving us more space and more room allows more um, people to come in and hopefully gain more members into Grace Gospel. The property next door is going to allow us to extend whatever activities that we want for our community events. I love that Grace Gospel walks the walk and we open our doors to the community. The trunk or treat is awesome, so we could do more with that. So it just allows for expansion of all the good things that we're already doing. And it'll be great to have an own, our own little youth group space. So we're so excited about the new house next door because um, we have been really praying for a space for youth. We're so excited for them to have like their own space where we can decorate it however, you know, we want, however the kids think is cool, I guess. Very excited for that and it's, I feel like it'll be an awesome project that everyone can take on and also bring the church closer together. We thought we just needed more space to park people, but apparently we needed a whole new building with parking <laughs> so we can grow our youth ministries and uh, other uh, spaces that were, we didn't know we needed. To be able to utilize all of it would be so awesome to just be able to have an extension of what we already have, and that's 
such growth that we can bring and have more people on our property seeing who God is and the love from our people extended to them. So we're excited to be part of Grace Gospel Church. We, we've got to see over 34 years what God has done, how he's, he's brought families in, how people have been led to Christ, how he's changed lives of people. And, uh, and we get, we've had the privilege of seeing that firsthand. And now we're excited about what he has for us in the future. Uh, what he's going to do here, what he's going to do next door, um, not with the building, but what's going to happen inside the building with ministry and, and how many hearts he's going to change. So we look forward to that. Mm -hmm. um, praise God. Hopefully he gets all of the glory here at Grace Gospel. Thanks. Amen. So I, I love what Rich said at the end, right? Um, you know, we're, we're expanding property, but the reality is, is that we do it so we can expand ministry because it's not really about a building. It's not really about a building here. It's about lives that can be changed with the gospel of Jesus Christ and people changed for an eternity, right? Not just for a day, not just for a lifetime even, but for eternity. And that's what we are all about and so what we desire to do. And so we're just excited about that. As a matter of fact, if you've never been over there, with most, most of you haven't as far as in the house, today and next week we're having an open house. So you can go um, and you can go uh, visit in there. Uh, and they'll be there for a while today because we're going to pack some shoe boxes, and so you can pack and then go over there. But uh, um, that'll be there. There's even some bagels and coffee. I mean, how good is that, right? So if you want a, a bagel or a cof or coffee, you got to go over to the next building and go see it. So um, it'll be in the back door. Is that right? right? We're going in the back door. So not the front door, but the back door. That's unlocked. And then you can go there. There'll be a few deacons who can um, show you around and tell you what's going on and what it is. All right? So just a good time. We're excited about that. Part of that is, and we introduced this last week, is that we've got to pay not only for that property but for the parking lot that we want to build in that property toward the back. And uh, so um, we kicked off our three-year expansion campaign where we're asking uh, our congregation to sacrifice above and beyond tithe and to, to just pray. So we didn't want any money last week. We didn't get any money last week, and that's the way we wanted it. It was not about a money raising to kind of get you uh, into a mood and then start paying out money or to make a... Um, um, a spontaneous decision. We want you to make a, a prayerful decision about what you might commit over the next three years to give to that piece. And so um, there are commitment cards on the table. If you were there last week, you got one. If you weren't, there are commitment cards and brochures that show the building and some outline in the parking lot and those kind of things so that you can get an idea of that. We'll have a question and answer time in probably two Sundays, the first Sunday of December, where if you weren't there, you can talk and we can ask about that. And then we're asking for the commitment cards to come back at the annual meeting, which is the second Sunday of December. So the 12th, I think. But all right, makes sense. So a lot of good things. Uh, we're just so excited about what God's doing here. And uh, again, it's not just about property, although he has shown his hand in that piece of property <laughs> and how uh, he's with us. And it, it's just so cool. It's just so cool. So very cool. All right. The other thing that we're doing today is, and this is just another uh, point of our heart where we get to reach out to the, not only to the community, but to the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so if, if this is the first time you're here and you just happen to be visiting, I don't know, I mean, and you're going like, what in the world is that pile and why do people have shoe boxes? <laughs> I'm looking over there, there's things hanging out of shoe boxes because you guys pack so well. Um, it's so cool. And... Uh, so this is a time, we, we, we participate in what's called Operation Christmas Child. It's a ministry of Samaritan's Purse uh, that we partner with. And what they do is they deliver shoeboxes full of gifts around the world um, through churches and Christian ministries for this express purpose of being able to share the love of Jesus Christ with others and be able to share the gospel with that. And so what's really cool is that these shoe boxes get to go to places that you and I would never go to and get into homes that you and I would never get into. And so we get to be a part of that here at Grace Gospel Church. And so we're, every year we pack hundreds of shoe boxes as a church and, uh, and we get to deliver that. So I'm going to ask Troy to come on up. He's going to get me a shoe box and him a shoe box. And, um, because what I love about this, and, and my wife, 
Um, you can see, even see by your shirt. I got my swag going on here too. Um, so what is really, I want a plastic one. Give me that. Give me that plastic one. Give me it. <laughs> Don't give me it. Don't get, yeah, no, come on. I like these plastic ones. Um, my wife reminds us of this and, and as a church and, and uh, just has reminded my heart that this shoebox represents a child who is loved by God, who very well right now, God knows that child's situation, this boy who is 10 to 14 years old, God knows this boy's situation and where he is and, and will reach at exactly the right time with exactly the right gifts. I don't know what gifts are in here. This is not one I packed, but um, um, God knows what's in here. God, I trust, was with you when you were putting this stuff in here. So that you'll reach that. And we, we had a few weeks ago, right, we had Eve here, and he talked about getting a scarf. He, he's from Togo, Africa. And, and somebody gave him a scarf. Like, what in the world, right? Because you were packing it thinking that somebody in Croatia needed something for the wintertime. And he said he got teased for years about having the scarf until through a relocation program in America because he was a refugee from Rwanda. They brought him to the United States, and he landed at his final destination in Buffalo, New York. And he reached in his backpack and took out his scarf and said, who's laughing now? <laughs> See, God knew where he was going to be and what he needed. And it showed him even greater at that moment that God knew every step that he was ever going to take. And God loved him from the very first. How cool is that, right? And so we, we get to do that. We get, these are per, little personal missions projects, every single one of them. And so what we're going to do is what we do here at Grace. We couldn't do it last year. I'm so excited that we can do it this year, and I'll explain a little bit to you in that. But um, we're going to pray over these shoe boxes, and then not only are we going to pray, and then we're going to bring an offering to Jesus. And the offering today, as far as in this time of the service, is your shoe box unto the God. And I really love the picture of that is that we bring forward so that God may use as an instrument for him a shoe box, Right? I'm always reminded of the young boy when Jesus said, what do you have to feed 5,000 people? Which was, by the way, 5,000 men, so it was 10 to 15,000 people. And said, you know, what do you guys have? And they looked around, and some little boy was willing to give up his lunch, five loaves and two fish, five little loaves, not big, you know, little loaves and two fish. And uh, because he thought it could, you know, and, and they were like, well, we don't have anything, but we have these five loaves and two fish. That's all we could find. And what they were saying was, see, I mean, we got nothing. And to be honest, a shoebox in my hands or in your hands is just a shoebox full of toys. But in the hands of the master and the one who multiplies what is not enough, he makes it enough. And he reaches into the lives of little children, and not only that, but their families and their villages and their town with the love of Jesus Christ. And so today we get to bring them up to say, Lord, this is our little offering. Right? I don't care how many shoe boxes you packed, whether it was one, whether it was a hundred, whether it was a thousand. It's just a little offering because there's way too many need out there, right? But in the hands of God, in the hands of the master. It's a beautiful offering that he will take and he will use and he will expand it for the glory of God. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to ask you, if you've got a shoebox next to you, to lay a hand on that. Um, and, uh, and we're going to pray over these shoeboxes. And Danielle is going to come up and she's going to lay hands on some of those up there with her team who are going to collect those. And they can grab hold of those, some of those shoeboxes. And... and um, um, and we're going to pray. So Troy's going to pray, and then I'm going to pray. And actually, I'm going to pray, and then Troy's going to pray and close. And then, um, and, then, and then I'll tell you when, and it's a beautiful, chaotic moment, but, but picture God in that. And, and what I'll tell you is this. If, if it's too crowded and you're not comfortable and you don't want to come up, there'll be a few deacons in the back who will be walking around. You can just hand it to them, and they'll bring up your offering. All right? Because I don't, I don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable. Or if you want to wait till the end, that's fine, too. You know, that kind of thing. All right? Make sense? All right, let's pray. Father God, oh, Jesus, I think about this little boy right here, this 10 to 14-year-old little boy right here, and these kids that each one of us are touching, and those kids that are represented there. And, Lord, I just thank you for them. I thank you for their lives. And, 
for how you are moved in them and how you are moving in them and how you want to move in them, Lord. And how we get to present an offering to you that is not just a shoebox, it is hope. And it is the love of Jesus. And so, Father God, would you use these little offerings that we have, these five loaves and two fish, and we place them into the hands of the master that you may take them so that you may change lives with them, that you may, you may strike a child's heart, you may strike their parents' hearts and their villages' hearts and their town's heart, Lord, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Would you do a good work, Lord? Would you do a good work, Lord? And what we bring to you today for your glory. Lord, thank you. We love you. We praise you. God, we just stand in awe of you this morning. Stand in awe of who you are. And uh, God, the fact that even in just a small gift, a small offering, in your hands can have a tremendous impact. God, we are so thankful for this ministry that we get to be a part of and that we get to partner with. Uh, God, and I thank you for each and every single shoebox in this room right now that represents a child, that represents a child who may have never received a gift before. And, and, and Lord, this box represents a gift and it represents the gospel. God, we pray that with each of these boxes that you would just send forth so clearly your gospel. And, and, and even the love that we have for these children and for these boxes is nothing in comparison to the love that you have for them, each child. God, we are asking that you would move. We are asking that as we, as we pray over these boxes, as we send these boxes onward, God, that you would do something, that you would move in the, in the hearts and the lives of each individual that this box represents, in the communities and the families that they represent. And God, may you alone receive the glory for that. Lord, you know where each of these boxes is to go. We think of Eve, who received a scarf. She didn't know what it was for at the time, but God, you knew. God, and we pray that that would be the case over each of these boxes, each of these boxes in this room and across the world right now that are being prayed over, that are being constructed. God, that you know exactly where it goes and who it belongs to. Lord, we give it to you. There's no greater hands to put it in than yours. Lord, we love you. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so this is what's going to happen. When I say go, <laughs> it's actually not a race. And I know some of you will get frustrated because you're like, oh, we take it. It's okay. So these ladies up here, you're going to hand them your shoe box, and they're going to take it from you, and they're going to put it on the pile. <coughs> and uh, and, they're, and you're going to give it unto the Lord. And so it'll be a joyous time, it'll be a chaotic time, and it'll be a beautiful time. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Right? All right. You ready? Sit down, Kyle. <coughs> Go. Go ahead. told you you had the power to give someone hope beyond their wildest dreams and what if i told you it's right there in your hands in your hands it's hard to imagine how something so small can make all the difference Tear down the tallest wall What if December Looked different this year What if we all just Yeah.
told you you have the power to give someone hope far beyond their wildest dreams what if this All right, that's some beautiful chaos, wasn't it, ladies? All right, woohoo! That's right, give a, give a hand to the Lord. God is good. All right, hold up. Wait, wait, hold up. All right, ladies, selfie, ready? Come on. Oh, wait. Nice. All right, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> that is cool. Now, yeah, give, it a, give God another round. Too cool. And guess what? Kids are now dismissed to go downstairs <laughs> for a kingdom kids or super church. <laughs> uh, God is cool. Amen? <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and pray, and uh, Pastor Patrick's going to bring the message for us this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to be gathered together today. So thankful to uh, just be able to do something like we've done this morning with Operation Christmas Child and, and just the love and the joy that exists in this room right now. Uh, for the children that these boxes get to reach, the, the children that these represent. Uh, God, we are so thankful. So thankful for what you are going to do. Uh, God, and we just give this time to you as we continue uh, to, to worship you through the study of your word. We pray that you would be with our pastor as he has prepared this message for us this morning. Uh, God, may you speak to us. May it be your words uh, for us this morning so that we uh, can, can uh, learn even how to, how to better represent you as your ambassadors uh, today. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love that chaos. I really do. That's really cool. You guys are awesome. Um, thank you for that. Now, there's one more thing that you get to do. So after the service, so we're going to wait about five, ten minutes. Some of you are going to want to run up here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take these shoe boxes, stack them in, in rows so that we can count them, so stacks of five, 
and then we're going to cartonize our own boxes. And so we need some help with that. So um, I prompt, I shouldn't promise you. Um, um, if you stay in cartonized and there's no bagels, I'll go buy you a bagel. Okay? I'll go buy more. All right? So I was going to promise you there was bagels. Over there. I'm sure there will be. I don't know. I'm, we always have enough. So um, don't, if you're over there because you're not cartonizing, you get one bagel. And that's all you get. <laughs> you only get one. Don't eat five. One bagel. If you're cartonizing and then there's still bagels, you can eat as many as you want. <clears throat> okay? Makes sense? So that's right after the service. Um, uh, about five, ten minutes, I'll announce it, and then we'll stack them, or I'll give you instructions. We'll make actually a line, and we'll just hand them down the line and all that kind of good stuff. All right? Good stuff. All right. So we have been, over the last few weeks, talking about building grace, right? And, and we've specifically been talking about how God is using us and calling us to do that. So I've told you every week our uh, mission statement, which is we're well grounded in to exalt Christ and to point others to him. That's what we're called to do, right, as a church. We're called to exalt Christ and to point others to him. And that's um, really our heart's desire. I believe that um, for, let's say, the large, um, large area of our church, we, that's what we desire to do. We desire to truly exalt Christ in everything we do, and we desire to point others to him. That's what we want. Our motto here is a place to call home. And uh, I love the videos. If you were there uh, Sunday night, um, some of those, and we might show those again at some point, but some of those people who, one of them, I forget who it was, went, said, you know, that's just an understatement, a place to call home, because that's just who we are. <laughs> you know, and we, we really are family as a church of Jesus Christ, and we love that. We love each other, and so that's a lot of fun. Um, but one of the things we don't talk often about, although I do somewhat, is our vision statement. Our vision statement is how we do the mission. In other words, how are we going to accomplish the mission to exalt Christ and to point others to him? And we're only going to do that if we are a Holy Spirit-empowered movement of God on mission to multiply his kingdom. And so for the last two, three weeks, no, two weeks before now and then this week, we've been talking about this. So two weeks ago, we talked about being a Holy Spirit-empowered movement of God. <laughs> that we, just like, just like these shoeboxes, right, just like we talked about that, we can pack a shoebox, we can deliver a shoebox, and giving a kid that doesn't have much a gift is a beautiful thing, right? It's, it's not like it's, I don't want to minimize that. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> but we don't do it. Just to give a kid a gift who doesn't have anything. We do it to give Jesus to a kid, right? To bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to a child. That's why we do it. And so we get that opportunity to do that because we want, because if the Holy Spirit ain't in it, then it's just about uh, man's movement and we can have some temporary success, but it won't be eternal. And we want eternal things here, right? So that means we've got to be a Holy Spirit empowered movement of God. Uh, constantly being filled with the Holy Spirit, constantly allowing the Holy Spirit to have control of us, that we don't move in our natural tendencies, which I don't know about you, but my natural tendencies aren't great, right? I need to move in the Spirit of God. And then um, last week we talked about, oh, keep that up. Move that back, I was looking at it, thank you. There you go. We were talking about being on mission. And we gave our mission verse from Colossians about the fact that um, the only answer to the hope that's out there is Christ in us. Not Christ among us, not Christ with us, but Christ in us. That's what saves us. And so because of that, we preach Jesus. And so we need to be on mission all the time. Right? So today we're going to take just a few minutes. I know some of you are already worried. You're looking at the clock and uh, you're saying pastor's talking and that means you're going to be here a long time, and you probably will. But um, um, <laughs> but that last little bit of that, right? Oh, put it back up there, Jay. Sorry. That's my fault. Um, we're on mission to multiply his kingdom. You get that? We're on mission to multiply or to build, not our kingdom, not our church, not our whatever. You know, well, we got more property and, you know, we want to take over the whole block or anything. You know, like, like we want something so that people will see us and see how good of a church and how big of a church and how nice of a church so that we can get more people, so that we can have more things, so that we can have more. 
That's, that's not what we're about. <laughs> I mean, do we, would we love to minister to more people? Absolutely. Would we love, more people means that we get to reach out more. So, all right, so we're all, that's, that's good. Right? As a matter of fact, if we're a healthy, if we're a healthy church, we're, we're reproducing. We're reproducing. Some of those people on that video accepted Jesus Christ while coming to Grace Gospel Church. Praise the Lord. Right? And so, that's what we want to be about. Right? So, this, this understanding that we're about God's kingdom, not about our kingdom. That we're ab about God's kingdom, not about our kingdom. And so as we look at that, I just wanted to look at a verse today. We're going to look at it quickly. So if you would, open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. <laughs> we're going to talk about my second favorite verse today. All right. And... And I love 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And to be honest, I, this was just this morning I looked at it. I looked at my, if you have the New American Standard, if you don't have a Bible, there's a Bible in the row uh, somewhere in front of you or, or underneath you. Um, if you don't have a Bible at home, take those home. We'd love for you to have that. But at my New American Standard, I love it because it talks about the temporal and the eternal. That's how chapter 5 is labeled. The temporal and the eternal. And uh, that's, that's exactly perfect of what we're talking about. We don't want the temporal. We want the eternal. That's what we want. And so that's what this is about. When we, Because the only thing that will last for life is the kingdom of God. You know that, right? Jesus said he came to build his kingdom. To show that the kingdom of God is here. It's not about us. It's about him. It's not about our kingdom. It's about his kingdom. Like we don't, we don't. We don't like form our own little kingdoms. We join into, in Christ, through faith, and, and, and understanding that, that he has died for us, and we accept that as our, as, as our sacrifice for sin. We join into his kingdom. We become a member of his kingdom, a member of his family for that. And so as we even talk about building grace, we're really talking about building the kingdom about building God's kingdom, because that's what we need to be about. And so, again, real quick, Ephesians chapter 5, um, let's talk about some things that it does here. I think first it talks about the motivation that we can have, or, or the motivation, what should motivate us to build his kingdom, right? So our motivation for building his kingdom. And I love this. Look at verse 14 first. It says this. The love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. So just that little section. For the love of Christ controls us. I want you to just sit in that for a second. The love of Christ controls us. John, uh, the, 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 the writer John in 1 John 4, 9, it, it, it's 19, it, it's clearly um, given to us that we love because God first loved us. Right? So the love of Christ, which he has brought down and shown to us, we have. Right? If we're in Christ, then we ought to have the love of Christ in us. Does that make sense? This is really logical here. Right? And that means that we love the things that God loves, and that means people. Right? You know, you know a lot of you love this verse, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he... Gave his only begotten son that whoever, who, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world. Right? My favorite verse, we don't have it up there, but Romans 5, 8. God demonstrates his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. God, God did something in love. Right? So we need to have the love of Christ in us, which means that we love the people we look at. Because everybody we look at is loved by God. That's really tough because some of us have some people that aren't very lovable in our lives. Is that right? Can I get an amen? <laughs> this is true, right? I mean, we, we're people. By the way, we're not lovable to some people because we're people. And people are just like that. But you know what? We're loved by God. We're loved by a holy and eternal Father. We don't, we don't deserve that love, right? We know that. Matter of fact, what we deserve is an eternity in hell away from him. And that would be our end except for the grace of God which reaches out to us 
through Jesus Christ dying on a cross for us, that we would have life. That we would have not just life for, like we talked about earlier, for a moment, but eternal life. How cool is that? That's the love of God that's in us that needs to be reflected in us, that we need to have. It needs to motivate us to be about his kingdom. So with that, look at what it says, because right there in verse 14, it's not only the love of Christ, but it's the knowledge of salvation. Now, when I, when I say that, or, well, let's get to this. Verse 14, it says this. For again, for the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died, and he died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. So we understand, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you're in the kingdom, if you will, you understand that there is no other way for there to be life for anybody except through Jesus Christ. I mean, you might know some really great people. You might know some really nice people. People who are, have loved on you, you know, grandmas can be that way. We always love our grandma, right? Grandma always gets high billing. You know, moms never really get high buildings, but, but grandmas do. Why? <laughs> because they've already wasted, you know, spent all their energy on their kids, and now all that's left is love for their grandchildren. <laughs> and then they get to send them home. You know, they get to sugar them up, spoil them, and then send them home. Praise the Lord. Amen, grandmas and grandpas, right? Woohoo! Hallelujah. Um, right? But we, we understand we're, we're never going to share the gospel with passion. If we, don't, if we are not absolutely convinced that the gospel is true and that there is no other way to heaven and that Christ died for all. I love what J.D. Greer said when I started two weeks ago. I gave this quote. He said, the church at its inception, was essentially a movement. A movement built around conviction that Jesus had died as the only Savior for, the, for sinners and that he had risen from the dead, proving who he said he was and that he was the rightful Lord of the earth and all people everywhere were now commanded to repent and invited to come home to him. Outside of Jesus, there's only death. Outside of Jesus, there is only death. As a matter of fact, outside of Jesus, you are already dead, Scripture says. Ephesians chapter 2, you are dead in your trespasses and sin. As a matter of fact, John 3, 17, right? For God so loved the world, John 3, 16. John 3, 17 says he didn't come to condemn the world, but he came to save it. Do him. Why? Because the world's already condemned. See, you don't, you don't have to work toward death. You're already there. And because of that, you can't work toward life because your sin separates you from God. So, you know what's left? There's only one thing left, and that's grace. The grace of God. The love of the Father and the, 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 the fact that he has died and, and come that we might have life in Christ. And so we understand that. That's why, that's why Paul says in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, he says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to all who believe, to the Jew first and then also to the Greek. Paul says, I'm, I'm not ashamed to share the gospel because it's the only way to salvation. It's the only way to salvation. So, I've often said this, if we're not sharing the gospel, which is why Thursday night we did a presentation simply on the simple gospel message. If you weren't able to be here, there are some outlines. It's evangelism explosion. It just goes through a clear-cut outline of the gospel. Take each of those colors. One's a shorter outline. One's a longer outline. If you have questions, you come back. It's just a clear, because we rarely get to the point of the gospel. But it's the gospel that saves I mean, we, there's a lot of other theology to talk about, a lot of other things to talk about. The only question is, what are you going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do with Jesus? And so, 
And so that needs to motivate us. And I've, I've said, you know, so if we're not sharing the gospel, there might be one of two things not true of us. Either we don't have the love of the Father in us, or we're not convinced that the gospel, that Jesus Christ, you know, and his sacrifice is the only way to, 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 to know salvation, to have salvation. Now, I get it. There's a third point, and that is we're lazy and self-consumed and self-focused. But maybe that's the love of God thing, right? I don't, I don't know. I mean, listen, we all struggle with that, including myself. But, but what needs to motivate us, one, is the love of God. The, the love of God needs to control us to the knowledge of God. If that happens, then what will motivate us is that we will see with a new perspective. <coughs> and we will see with a new perspective. Look at verse 16. He said, because of these truths, therefore, from now on we recognize no one according to the flesh. Even though we've known Christ according to the flesh, yet we know him in this way no longer. In other words, even though we had known him personally, that wasn't our salvation. We don't, now we know him according to the Spirit. Right? There's a, there's a new creation there. See, and that gets back to that thing of God's the only way to salvation. That, that God's just not about um, trying to improve you. Sometimes we think that. Right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior because there are some things that I need to change in my life and I need to get better. God's not interested in just improving you. He's interested in creating something new there. There's a great example. Um, a, a writer, I don't know where this is from, but he said, Lindsey Craig uh, Clegg was a businessman who was selling a warehouse property he owned. He said the building had been empty for months and needed repairs. Vandals had damaged the doors, slashed the windows, or smashed the windows, shooting trash all over the interior. As he showed a prospective buyer the property, Lindsay promised that he would replace the broken windows, bring in a crew to correct any structural damage, clean out the garbage. He said, but the buyer said this. He said, forget about the repairs. When I buy this place, I'm going to build something completely different. I don't want the building. I want the site. So this writer says this. God didn't come into your life to rescue you because he liked the building you've made. He wanted the site. He wanted you so that he could build an entirely new building there. Something beautiful. Something we could never have built. People who try to improve their own lives so that God will accept them are like people sweeping a warehouse that is slated for a wrecking ball. It's pointless. See, God, God, God creates new. That's why one of our points is that we want transformation, not just transaction. We don't want just people to come to church. We want them to be completely changed, transformed not by us, but by the gospel of Jesus and by Christ in their lives. And because we can see with a new perspective that we don't judge according to the outward. Well, that's a really nice person. <laughs> you know what a really nice person who doesn't know Jesus, you know what their future is? Hell. Think of the nicest person you know. If they don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they're going to hell. Well, that's not fair. Oh, yes, it is. They've sinned, and they deserve hell. That's why we bring them the gospel, because they need life. <laughs> All right, and then finally, that motivation, the newness of life. Look at what it says in verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, it's just, it, see, it all builds on each other. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation or a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, all things Behold, new things have come, sorry. How cool is that? Right? The newness of life. That's that transformation. We're not about, see, so get this progression. The love of Christ controls us. Right? The understanding that the gospel is the only way. So therefore, we need to see with a new perspective. We don't look at people according to, to, their, to their outward. Uh, we look at what's inside. And there's only two kinds of people in the world, ultimately. Those who know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and those who don't. That's it. I don't care what kind of colors you wear. I don't, kind of what team, I don't care what team you root for. There's only two teams. And here's the good news. Is that the invitation is to get out of the death team to come to the life team. 
And we have the answer to that. All right? So, because of that, God's given us a ministry to build his kingdom. Our ministry in building his kingdom is this. Look at verse 18. Now, all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. <coughs> God gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Now, I don't know if you think that's cool. I think that's cool. I, I know most of us would rather that the, that the, the trees would cry out because they can, right? Or the rocks would cry out because they can. But God's chosen that that won't be the way that people hear about Jesus. He doesn't need for that to happen. He has his church. And church, we're called to preach the gospel. We're called to speak Jesus to a dying world. That's our ministry. It's the ministry of reconciliation. So get this. I, I need to have and be controlled by the love of Christ, but I don't have the ministry of Christ. I'm not going to die for them so that they, their sins are covered. That, that's already been done. Jesus took care of that. My ministry, though, is a ministry of Jesus where I bring Jesus to others so that they can be reconciled to their God. All right, what does that mean? Look at verse 19. Namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them as he had committed and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Therefore, verse 20, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were making an appeal through us, we beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. That's our ministry. Now, I, I know what you're thinking. I'm not good at it. Well, welcome to the team. I'm not good at it. You're not good at it. We're all not good at it. And yet God still chose us to do, to, to do that. Like, like, why would he do that? You ever, you ever wonder? I mean, because God doesn't need you and I. Are we right? God doesn't need us. But, and yet God's chosen that we would be his mouthpiece to the world. We would be chosen reflectors. As a matter of fact, when we talked on earlier in 2 Corinthians, we talked about the fact that we're just clay pots. And much of us are like this clay pot. We're broken. Right? We're broken. And we're called to be reflectors in the, in the, in the, in the verse before this, in the chapter, I'm sorry, before this, chapter 4. We're called to be reflectors of God. But I don't know about you, but a clay pot doesn't reflect anything very much, does it? And yet we're called to do that. We're called to be a reflector of God's light so that they will see Jesus. And I love this. Look back just on a page. I mean, I have it on the board too. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Why would he have that? Verse 7 says this. He says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Sorry, this is verse 7. It's not verse 8. I don't know why I changed the date. We have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the surpassing greatness of the power of God will be of God, not of ourselves. <laughs> so I love that. God calls us broken, bad reflectors to reflect his image so that when they see Jesus in us, we can't take the credit. <laughs> it's God's and his power in us. How cool is that? It's not about us, it's about him. But make no mistake, he's called us to be the reflector. So, so our excuses of the fact that I'm not a great reflector, which I understand you're not, I'm not either. But the point is, is that he is able to shine in and through us, out to others. And so we shine. We shine for him. As a matter of fact, in the, in the book before, 1 Corinthians, don't, don't put this up there yet. Let me read it, and then I'll tell you when to put it up here. Because um, I'm going to read a few verses before. Verse 27 says this. this is, I don't know if this makes you comfortable. That doesn't feel good. Just listen. Just listen. I don't have it on the board. Listen. God chose the foolish things. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. You know who he's talking about here? Us. 
weren't the foolish things of the world. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. And the base things of the world and the despised things God has chosen the things that are not so that he may nullify the things that are. So he's chosen us, us who are unable, us who are broken and bad reflectors. He's chosen the weak of the world to shame the wise and to shame the strong. Why? Verse 29, this is what I have on the board here. So that no man may boast before God. Because you know who gets the credit then? God. What I've loved about this piece of property next door is we were praying for the property across the street. Were we? We were praying for a few years for the property across the street. And God said, well, right prayer, wrong place, but that's okay because it's all about me, not about you. And I just love it. I love it. I'm like, yes, God. When, they, when, we, when we found out that, we approached him, we talked to him, and it just like all went like, like butter. I mean, it just all went like butter. And it was like, God, this is so cool because it's of you. When, we, when I met with the elders and deacons and I said, you know, this is the opportunity what do you guys think? I love it. One of the deacons said, like, it's from God. What are we going to do? What are we going to say? It's from God. See, God gets the credit for that. We weren't smart enough in thinking about it and like somebody thought about, hey, let's go negotiate. Let's go see. Let's go talk. Let's go talk to the, you know, God. But God. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool, right? Our ministry is the ministry of reconciliation. I know you don't feel... I know you don't feel worthy, you're not. I know you don't feel able, you're not. I know you don't feel equipped, you're not. I mean, we're going to try to give you some tools. That's what the EE outline on the back is, right? But, but that's not because you're able. Some of the best presentations I've given of the gospel of Jesus Christ have fallen on deaf ears. And some of the worst ones resulted in somebody coming to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But, I, but it, it just didn't flow really well that day because it wasn't about me, right? It's about God. Praise the Lord. So that means because we have the ministry of reconciliation, we have, which basically is we have the ministry to build the kingdom. That's our ministry. So therefore, we're ambassadors for God. Right? An ambassador is, a, a, is an official envoy in a foreign land that represents the, the, the leadership of the country they are from. So when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you become immediately a saint, a citizen of heaven. Immediately. But you also, but you say, well, wait a second, I'm a sojourner. Right, First Peter, I'm a sojourner in a foreign land. I'm, 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 this is not my place anymore. America is not your home country, or wherever you're from is not your home country anymore. My home country is heaven. <laughs> it's not a country, I get that, but you know, all right? But that's my home place. <laughs> so why am I still here? Because I'm an ambassador for the king, for the real king. And I'm called to represent him in everything that I do. Matter of fact, I'm called to exalt him in everything I do and to point others to him in everything I do. That's what I'm called to do. Praise God. <clears throat> so, I love, I love what Paul does here because just in case you wonder what the message is, he says there's, there's one message which builds the kingdom of God. There is one message which builds the kingdom of God. Look at verse 21. He made him who knew no sin to be sin, become sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God. The message of the kingdom, the, 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 the message that builds the kingdom is not you can have a better life, <laughs> you know, or, or get better, or, 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 or you're going to, if you come to know Jesus, everything will work out better for you. You know, five easy steps to... To, uh, to have a more successful life, to, to live the best life that you can live. Um, I was a very young pastor when there was a system of sermons that came out where they would preach four-week sermons that would build to a, to a thing, and they were all based off of felt needs. 
And most of our churches in the last 20 years have followed this model. If you start with a felt need that they need, and then you, you know, sometimes they don't even give them a lot of scripture in the beginning, and then you build to something about how God can solve that need. Because really what people are looking out to do is to improve themselves. God's not looking to improve you. He's looking to kill you. And then put something better in its place. That which is built of Jesus. That which is not the same, but transformed. Like when a, like, like, not exactly like, but like, when a caterpillar spins his cocoon, and what comes out is not a caterpillar, but a moth. I mean, but a moth, a butterfly. Sometimes a moth, and they're nasty, and you just want to fly away. So, but a butterfly that can fly, right? Because he's been metamorphosized. Come on, guys. Don't worry about it. Don't correct me later. I don't care. <laughs> right? Metamorphosis, right? They've gone through metamorphosis. They've, they've changed. God doesn't want you to look the same. He wants you to look like him. Matter of fact, your destiny, Romans 8, 29, says that you've been predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. God wants you to look like Jesus. Not have the ministry of Jesus. No, your, your ministry is to point to Jesus, right? To that. And so we've got to get out of this. We've got to get out of the American thing that we're building our kingdom. You know, you want a better house, you want a better car, you want a better life, you want a better relationship. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You come in the church of Jesus Christ. I mean, the church is, is the church gets slammed. The church deals with marriages. The church deals with raising children. The church, you know, teaches you how to do all kinds of things, how to deal with finances and those kind of things. We have, we've had different classes over the last several years on all of those. Raising children, right, doing finances. I mean, you'll be a better person, but that's not why, right? It's so that you can understand who Christ is so that you can do it like him. Because we're not trying to help you to get better. Our goal is not for you to have enough. Because what's enough to you is not what is enough for God. Get rid of what you desire and fill it with the desire of Jesus Christ. And he will transform you. And you'll look better. And you'll look different. And you'll honor him. And you'll point others to him. We're about the kingdom. We need to be about his kingdom. We need to be about multiplying not us and our likes and our desires, but the things of God. So that when... Somebody comes into this place. I, I, don't, I don't want them to come into this place. When you come in, I don't want, I mean, listen, I hope you love people here. I hope it feels like home, and you're so glad to see each other. But ultimately, what I hope you see is Jesus. Because if, if <laughs> none of you want to look like me, I know that. Right? None of you want to look like me. I don't want to look like, we don't need to look like each other even in our spiritual lives. We want to look like Jesus. Amen? Amen. Uh, uh, I got to get ready to play. So Troy's going to come up and he's going he's gonna to pray. Uh, so why don't you guys bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for who you are. God, we are thankful for the fact that you call us and you choose us to be your ambassadors. Lord, we don't know why you choose us, but you do. Scripture is very clear. And God, we realize that we are unworthy, incapable of, of doing that, of being your ambassadors in and of ourselves. Lord, we need you. God, we pray that you would help us, you would guide us, you would lead us in the way of being the ambassadors that you desire for us to be. God, we have a, a mission here of exalting Christ and pointing others to him. And we can only do that. The, the way that we do that is that we desire to be a Holy Spirit-empowered movement of God on mission to multiply your kingdom. God, it's not about us. It's not about our kingdom. It's not about this building. It's not about the property across the street. It is about your kingdom and your glory. 
Lord, we pray that you would keep us and we would stay focused on that truth that would be about you and you alone, that you alone would receive the credit, you alone would receive the glory, and that because you alone can transform lives. Lord, we love you. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand as we get ready for our last song? Um, and I just want to say how thankful I am to be a part of this church. And as I was standing up here this morning, um, I just realized how blessed I am to worship with a congregation. And just hearing you sing along with us is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And so I am just so thankful and humbled um, and worship with us this last song. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat.
wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. God, we are filled with wonder at who you are. Lord, you alone are, are worthy to be praised. You alone are worthy of our adoration this morning. God, we owe everything to you. And it's because of what you first have done for us in sending your son to this earth on a rescue mission, conquering sin and conquering death so that if we believe, we may have eternal life through you. And that now we are tasked with being your ambassadors in this world around us, God. Lord, we owe everything to you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 We do have prayer partners up here. If you need prayer, would like to pray with somebody. Uh, actually, I'm going to have you guys step over there. All right. You can do that later. But uh, they'll be over here off to my right to pray with you if you would like to pray with someone. And uh, a little bit of instruction for you. So uh, tonight, of course, is our Thanksgiving soup potluck and praise at 530. Uh, come out and join us. It's going to be a terrific time of just celebrating who God is and what he's doing. And, um, and then here in about five minutes, of course, we're going to start cartonizing uh, these shoe boxes right here off to my left. And so it's going to be a great time. Uh, please stick around, hang out, and uh, join us for that. Again, we'll be kicking that off here in just a couple minutes. And then uh, open house next door. Go grab a bagel, grab some coffee, and uh, take a tour of the property that we just acquired. Exciting stuff. A lot going on. And uh, so stick around for that.